Basically, there hadn't been, for the most part, any sit-ins even around the country prior to us sitting in. We sat in two years prior to Greensboro, North Carolina. So the whole idea of sitting in uh, was a new concept, but we were taught the uh, concepts of nonviolence by Dr. King and by Gandhi uh, as a part of our just learning uh, as a part of the NAACP Youth Council. The, you know, when you think about what the NAACP Youth Council stands for, or just the NAACP, it was always around equity and equality. And in our family, we would sit around the table and talk about uh, issues like that. My grandfather had been involved in the Pullman Porter movement. And so we were always taught that you're just as good as anybody, but you're not better than anybody. And so when we came back from New York and there were a group of kids, me included, were having that conversation, then it was not like we were not familiar with uh, the concept of uh, nonviolence. In order to get what needed to be done, meaning to change things, that we had to carry ourselves in a certain kind of way and we had to present ourselves in a certain kind of way. And it was very important that there be some degree of integrity with ourselves, but also respect for others. And so the day that we went there and was sitting at the lunch counter, we respectfully asked for a hamburger and a Coke. And as I indicated before, the waitresses were not keen on that. And after some degree of frustration, uh, called the manager over and said, they're not gonna leave, they're not going. And of course the managers you know, began to tell us that we had to leave, but we continued to sit there and just continued to ask for the hamburger and the Coke. And then of course, uh, people started to present their frustrations uh, verbally and saying things that were not nice and they were unkind. And in some cases, people got to be a bit uh, belligerent and uh, disrespectful in terms of uh, wanting to pour coffee or wanting to do things that were just uh, totally unacceptable. It was uh, an interesting experience, but we continued to be steadfast and um, just sit there until the time came. I think Cats being one of the first uh, we sat there for three days. On the third day is when we asked for the hamburger and a Coke and they said, okay. I think sometimes it's looking at the way life is flowing. It was just its time. Most of the people that were participating were teenagers, um, middle schoolers as we would call them now, 14, 15 year olds, and then some that were in, in, uh, in senior high school. My sister and I being the younger ones, for me being able to see the progress from seven to 14 was probably more valuable to me than most because if you're a high school student getting ready to graduate or you're a junior in high school, you're getting ready to go off to college. And so you didn't have to walk that journey that I walked. But the more we did it, the more people bought into the process. Like I said, we sat there from the time I was seven, I did, seven to 14, and you would think major company, big brand, you know, Midwest, uh, uh, lunch counters and, and drugstores all over the area that people would easily follow, but they did not. <laughs> and so even though Cat said yes, the other stores in Oklahoma City, it took seven years for them to uh, one by one start to change their mind and find out that it was important to treat people uh, equally.